Welcome to the second half of our uh, discussion today. So again, we've been talking about applying Tai Chi to uh, medical, how should I say, medical and uh, wellness, okay, uh, things. <clears throat> the important thing I did want to stress, and I, we talked about earlier in the class, one thing is that uh, when you teach Tai Chi for health and wellness, you need to make sure that you tailor it for the student or the patient. So that's number one, the most important thing to do. Two, that generally for patients, and we're talking about patients, the movements should be simple, easy to learn, effective. And also uh, try and use the principles of Tai Chi rather than just the outside movements of the body. And so many of what we taught today is trying to get the person in to activate the inside of their body rather than just the outside movement. And so uh, that's what I meant by learning Tran and learning Gong. In Tai Chi, the Gong part is about internal exercise, going from the inside out. Tran or the form using for application is about the outside of the body, how to activate the muscles, how to develop speed, <clears throat> And so that's a different type of exercise than what you should be doing for health and wellness. Okay, health wellness uh, is a different kind. And so you want to concentrate again, simple movements, effective movements, easy movements. So in order to do that, generally the movement should be circular, continuous, press opening and closing, for instance, that we did this morning. Um, should also include what? instructing the patient and student, one, to concentrate on what they're doing. So the mind has to be focused on whatever you're doing. So as I mentioned, if you're doing a shoulder circle, that the eye is paying attention to the elbow so that you can focus the mind here and that way block out the thoughts in your mind. And you're trying to reach what? A state of meditation. In uh, Qigong, they call that Lu Jing. Lu Jing meaning a state of quietness where the mind is relaxed, but also relaxing the body. So those two things also go together, which is why we had, if you remember all the exercises we did in the beginning that Mason took you through, that's to relax the body, stretch it out, develop limberness, flexibility, so then the chi can flow. And then we did the Tai Chi Chi Go exercises in addition, those are the get your chi moving. So once the body is are soft, relaxed, then you concentrate on moving the chi. Moving the chi helps a lot, speed up the healing process, helps you to uh, get rid of pain. So that's why those things are important. That's the purpose of all the exercise. The other things to remember is when you're advising patients, remember the tongue has to be touching the roof of the mouth. Okay, and also, as I said, mind has to be focused on what you're doing. You can't be thinking about washing your clothes or got to go out and shop, okay? Those things got to cut out of your mind. And the way to do that is to focus on what you're doing. Okay, so that's uh, some of the basic things. The movements we introduced today, and I'm going to do a couple after this. Uh, we're going to show you how to go from large range of motion to small range of motion. And that... And why is that? Because not every patient or person you're working with will have the same problem. So you need to diagnose the patient or the student and then see how to adjust what you're teaching to their particular situation. All right, so that's number one. So the next thing, however, <laughs> someone asked me during lunch, how about showing us the other four energies of Tai Chi? So. There's Peng Lu Ji An. Those are the first four energies of Tai Chi. There's also Chai Lie Zhou Kou. Chai is the pull down, Lie is the split. Zhou is elbow Kou, the shoulder, using the shoulder and elbow. These techniques make up the eight energies of Tai Chi. And including the five directions is what we call Ba Fa Wu Bu. These are the basic eight techniques of Tai Chi and the four directions, not five directions. Why is that important? Because this is the basis of Tai Chi. Nowadays, most people teach Tai Chi don't even teach you Ba Fa Wu Bu, but actually this is more important 
uh, in the beginning because it teaches you how to move the energy throughout your body, how to develop flexibility and also what movement. So uh, Bafa Wubu introduces moving meditation, okay? Using the different energies which move the chi through your body in different ways. So earlier we did the basic Bafa Wubu, okay? And then relax. So the next one we're doing is Chai Le Zhou Kong. Chai is the pull down. So Chai is pulling down. Le is splitting. So you relax, grab, and now Ko. Using the elbow for Ko. And then next is Zhou. I mean, that's Zhou. Sorry, this is Ko. So those are the five different techniques. You notice the difference. The earlier one, we didn't need to move very much. This one you do. And so normally we teach the first part to most people. Second part, again, it depends on the person's ability. Okay, if they can move, good, fairly good flexibility, this is a good way to go. And it also is a good way to get people moving. Otherwise, you could do Chai Le Joko, just standing here. which would be another way to actually do it. So let me do it just standing still first, because I think that's a pretty good, pretty good way to do it. So you're standing still. So you're gonna come up with the hands and you're in your John Jong position, Chai, you pull down, okay? Le, you split. So one hand cuts across, one hand's on the bottom. So, Again, here you meet the hand, turn your waist. Okay. So this activates the thigh mai, and then now, ko. Okay, and then now you can do it on the other side. You reach up, chai, li, and then bring the hand toward the heart, turn, ko. So now we've done it on both sides. So that's a uh, basic way of doing the other four energies of uh, Tai Chi. And this is standing still. You don't have to move anywhere. So I'm going to have Mason take you through it a few times, uh -huh. like six times on each side. So these are the other four energies of Tai Chi. And it can be done strictly as Qigong and to develop what? Basic motion, turning of the waist, uh, improving again, your circulation, softening the body. Okay, please. Okay, so chai le jo ko, pull, uh, split the elbow and then shoulder. So from a standing jong jong position, again, various different styles of doing so, but we're just going to show you that the, one of the most basic ways to do it. In fact, there's a form known as the ba fa wu wu that popular uh, that is that is currently being pushed that has this section in there. So we'll show you it. From your standing jong jong position, relax into your neutral state. Reach out to the corner. I'm gonna to reach to the left corner first, okay? Close the hands, pull down to the sides, relax. Okay. Hands open up, bring my hands back around. One hand goes down to the side, one hand just comes to the center. This is the split, okay? There's a little like splitting motion that looks like this from the side, as I go out. Okay. Now make a fist with the left hand, comes to the right palm, strike with the elbow. Now. Same thing applies I mentioned earlier. My hips are still faced forwards, but my waist turns, okay? So my knees and my feet are still facing forwards. That facilitates the movement. And I turn from the waist, okay? Now, open up the left hand, make a fist of the right hand. Right hand's gonna curve in, hooking it downwards. It kind of looks like this from the side. And I'm striking with the, the fist, elbow, like almost like a shoulder uh, hit. And that's how you facilitate the, the call strike. My other hand's gonna guard my face. It's blocking over my uh, right shoulder, okay? Now, relax. We're just gonna show you now from the other side. Reach to the right corner, close the hands. You can close from the pinky, finishing with your pointer and thumb. Bring your hands down. I'm gonna bend my knees slightly, straighten at the end. Open the hands, same thing. Left hand goes out, right hand comes down. This is a split, or the end. So, Leah, 
Now make a fist with the right hand, comes to meet the right, uh, the left palm, turn from the waist, strike with the elbow. Alternate the hand and fist, do that hooking strike forwards. The right hand's protecting your left side, your punch down. Good. Now we repeat that from the other side again. Grab to the left, chai. Okay, open up the hands. Yeah. So, ko. Okay. Relax. Hong Zong. The other side. So pull. Split. Elbow, shoulder. Good. Relax. One more time. So do one more set. So chai. Lia. Go. And call. Relax the hands, relax the arms. Begin again on the other side. Pull. Split. Elbow. Shoulder. Good. Relax. And down. So going. Questions? Yes, go ahead. Uh, I'm still a little bit confused about when when is the open hand? When do you turn the open hand into a a fist? Uh, a mm. little bit confused. Sorry. <laughs> no, this is a good question. Okay, so the timing is very important. So in the beginning, for Thai, the hands come up, close from the little finger, up until you close your fist. You pull down now. You pull down from the upper corner to the lower corner, okay? When your left hand reaches the lower corner, you begin to change into a palm, okay? The bottom hand presses down, this hand cuts across. So you're splitting the energy literally. literally. One, your left hand and right hand are separating the force. Now, this hand is gonna come in toward your heart. As it comes in toward your heart, the other hand comes up in a curve until they meet in front of Tanjong, okay? Tanjong is right here. From Tanjong, you rotate. You don't move your elbow first. You move from Tanjong. Tanjong is gonna turn, your elbow follows. By the way, your left hand's making a fist already by this okay. point. So, but, so again, you came down, you came across, it's still open, open-handed. As this hand comes up from the bottom, it becomes a fist, okay? And it comes up in a curve until it meets in front of your heart. When it's here, you turn from your waist now. Don't turn your hips, turn your waist, okay? The elbow should be in the middle of your body now, okay? For the next movement, you're gonna switch. The hand that's open becomes a fist. The hand that was closed becomes a palm. And as you do that, Okay, so you're here. This hand turns forward. You think about your elbow and shoulder going forward. Okay, and you notice I've turned my body. Again, turn your waist, but don't turn your hips. So if you cannot turn all the way, and this is as far as you can go, that's okay. Okay, I can turn farther, so I'll turn all the way to the middle. Okay. All right, then from here, you, uh, you can now relax, returning to the beginning. And you start now on the other side, again. Start from the little finger until you close your fist, draw down, that's chai. Okay, again, this hand is gonna come up, both palms, one facing up, the other one facing down. The one that's facing down presses downward, this one presses upward. That's why it's lia. You're actually splitting your energy, and if it's your opponent, you're splitting him, okay, or her. Okay, now from here. As you rotate back, as this hand comes toward your heart, the other hand comes up, becomes a fist. So now I'm facing forward. The hand is in front of Tanjong. 
From that point, I rotate the from my waist. Again, don't move your hips. Okay? Then this hand, the right hand here, becomes a palm. The left hand becomes a fist. And now I rotate. Again, I think about my elbow coming forward toward you. Okay, and then I can finish. Okay. Is that clear now? Uh, yeah, thank you. One more question in the Thai. You close the fist you, with the little finger first. Right. Uh, right. Is that the same for all the rest of the time when you change from an open palm to a fist or only just for the Thai? No, it should be all for all things. Okay. okay. So thank you don't you. just close like this. You close slowly. So even if you like, for instance, you do eight bouquets, it should be done the same way. Okay, so for instance, eight bouquets, a little finger closes and goes out. Little finger closes. Okay, so you gather the chi in and it spirals through your arm. That's why that's important. Okay. Uh, would it be any time that you close with your thumb first or, or any application where you need to? No. <laughs> no? Okay. So you open with the thumb first. Is that correct? That's right. So you open, that's okay. But yeah, no. Yeah. You, you don't usually open close with your thumb first. Because if you close with your thumb first, you might end up doing that. <laughs> so you don't want to do that. Little finger always. And then, of course, the thumb always ends up closing the fist. Okay. So when you finish, your uh, thumb should be on top of your fist. Okay. Don't put it inside. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or, or stick it out. Stick it out also bad. Okay. It closes. And then you draw it down. Okay. And then when you open right from here, as you open, you also open from, okay, like that. Yeah. Okay. So again, from here, ta. So actually, your little finger, everything else opens up and your hand stretches out. I should also mention the hand stretches out is not just like this, the hand is in what we call a tile palm. The tile palm is for concentrating your chi, okay? So it flows through the index finger, okay? And that's important because uh, that helps to activate your heart meridian. And so that's kind of really important that the hand be actually focused in this way rather than just relaxed. So again, if you're working with patients, especially ones with arthritis, they might not be able to strengthen their hands. So the thing you will want to stress with them, if they cannot open your hand, their hands, is to slowly try and flex it, okay? So for all these movements that we're doing, uh, like the Peng Lu Jian we did earlier, you try and get the, the person to, the patient to uh, expand the fingers as you're moving. So you notice my hand, the palm is actually opening and closing each time. That's to what? Pump the chi to the fingertips. And so, again, the reason that, you know, arthritis has such a problem is because your chi is stuck, is not moving. So you're not able to get the chi to the fingertips. So the hands become what? The, the chi, one, doesn't flow. So they can't heal, number one. Two, you can't move the chi there. You can't get the blood there to replenish and move the toxins out of your body, okay? The more that builds up, the more blockage you have, the less likely you can improve your circulation. So it's important to understand the role of your hands. The hands are not just like this, okay? My hands are actually opening and closing. Also true for any of the exercises we did today. You hear my, as I come down, my fingers open as I press down. Then I relax at the bottom. I still relax here. Then as it comes down, the fingers open and close. So one of the characteristics of Tai Chi that's important for health is opening and closing. You always try and open and close the joints. That's why we did the up and down using the legs also. It's opening and closing the leg joint to help, again, lubricate the joint, improve your circulation, uh, and to soften the body. So all those things occur when you do that. And it helps to pump the chi, and that's like really key. Uh, that's the way to improve a patient's health, your own health.
All right. All right. So my next part of discussion this time will be on what do you do once you've diagnosed a patient? Okay. So I'm going to take wave hand like clouds, which many of you may know. Okay. So what I'm going to do first is teach wave hand like clouds, the sun style Tai Chi way, because it's the smallest way to do it. But I'm also going to show you what do you do if you have a patient who has more mobility or able to do more? How do we change what we teach? So what we're going to do is borrow from different styles to kind of give you some different ideas. The smallest movement is generally the best for people who have arthritis. Okay, Biggest movement are people who are a little more athletic, have a little more health, but still have bad, bad posture, bad health. This will help also. So first is wave hand like clouds. I'm going to do that first. This is the sun style way. So if you learn wave hand like clouds before, don't think about that because that's not what we're doing. Okay. So for this wave hand like clouds, because it's sun style, both of my palms always face out. Okay. And you'll notice my waist moves, but very minimally. Okay. I move about at most 30 degrees, not very much. The hands come to about the height of my eyebrows and not pass. And so I turn my waist. Okay. Now this one is easy to do, but the coordination might be hard. So it may take many lessons before a student can actually do this well. Okay, so uh, how should I say? There is a learning curve to this. So you have to take your, take your time and have patience with the student, okay? So the palms always face out, also because it's at my height of my eyes, my eyes can follow it easily. So they can practice their focusing, help improve their mental state as they practice. All right, I'm gonna have Mason take you through that. That's wave hand like clouds. This is the sun style method. Okay, so let's see how go. My left hand's out here, my right hand's gonna be underneath, just for reference. But we're gonna go ahead and give this Six times on these sides. So one and two. And in the transition of the hands, once you reach the, the edge of your peripheral, that's when your left and your right hand can switch. Comes up. Now, maybe three more times. So wave hand like clouds, left. Right. And I'm opening my hands. So, you know, we talked about it earlier. Relax the fingers and hands. Open up the hands as it crosses the center. Relax fingers, alternate the hands. Open. Cool. So these are open and close here, even in this movement. So open the hands. Close the hands a little bit more. Then open. And close. Good. That's a little sun style wave hand like clouds. Okay, Sibyl. So the next way, so we can expand this. So you have a patient who doesn't have the early signs of arthritis, but they experience some pain maybe in their shoulders or their sides, or maybe even lower back. So this is wave hand like clouds that begin to loosen the lower back and also help to improve the circulation in the shoulders and the neck, okay? So this time, wave hand like clouds, you will note there's a difference. My body is gonna turn at least 45 degrees. My hands are gonna rotate. So let me demonstrate. So the other one started with the palm up. This one starts with the palm uh, facing me. As I turn out to the end, the hand is gonna rotate. The other one comes up. And so you notice as I get out here, the palm rotated, and as it falls, the other hand comes up, and now uh, it rotates as it passes my face, okay? Begins to rotate. So this is a bigger range of motion, okay? So again, you have to, as you evaluate your patients, decide which of these methods will work better, okay? Again, this is for uh, helping you to loosen the lower back, especially if you have lower back pain, 
Uh, it will help you with the shoulder circulation and neck circulation. Okay. And again, because it's at this height, it's easy to focus your eyes. The student can reach a meditative state much easier this way. Okay. All right. Again, uh, Mason, take you through this weight hand like clouds. This is the Yang style method. This is a medium size. Okay. Before we did small, this is medium size movement using the same type of technique, but using it for different ranges of motion. Okay. Give okay, that a go. So left and then right. Notice I rotate my hands and I'm turning a little bit more. You can also shift over your qua as well. So I meant to correct myself earlier. So qua and you're over your femur, where your femur connects into the hip. So you can shift if you like as well. Depends again on your client, how flexible or what their range of motion looks like. If they can't, they should do it internally. Think about the small movement still. Rotate, rotate. I'm gonna do four more times. Okay, pan my clouds. This is Yang style. Many of you have probably seen Yang style. It's the most well uh, recognized of the, of the core Tai Chi forms styles. Okay, a couple more times. Medium circle size. Good. And so you're in like clouds, young style. Okay, see what? Okay, so now we're gonna take another movement and try and do something similar, okay? So, we're first gonna go back to the Qigong exercise we did in Yang style, okay? Which is using uh, settle the wrist, push the palms, okay? But in Yang style Tai Chi, you're gonna start with a bow stance, okay? And the right hand forward. You're gonna shift your weight back. And as you do that, you raise, turn, circle, shift the weight forward and push. Now, a couple of things to note about doing this. My whole body is turning, so I'm not doing this, okay? As I turn, the whole body shifts and rotates. So I activate, again, my waist. The waist is important because you activate the Dai Mai, your belt meridian, which activates the Wei Qi and also connects to your uh, kidney Qi, huh? your life's Qi. So this helps to re-energize the body and improve the immune system. So again, you turn slowly, raise the hand, turn back. So this is a very big movement. So Yang style Tai Chi is famous for his large movements. So this example is from Yang style, much more common, okay? So uh, have Mason take you through that. We're gonna do it on both sides. Again, this is brush knee and press. Mm -hmm. Again, go into your bow stance. I'm going to start with my left foot forwards. So, okay. So I'm going to block down. Right hand comes up near my ear. Left hand comes across my knee. Right hand goes out. Back. Shift. And as I go forwards, my intention goes down through my front leg. As I come back, my, my intention, my weight, my, uh, my body center moves over my back leg. Forwards again. A couple of things too. The elbow stays relatively close. It's not gonna flare out. So my elbow's still down. Okay. Stands out. Okay. So again, keep your elbow close relatively to your body. Back. 
There's brush name press. One more time on this side. Good. Now we can come to the other side. So I'll alternate your legs. My right hand's already up, my left hand's back here. That then comes near the ear. Brush knee, press. Come back. You don't need to look very far back at your hand. You can turn your waist, let your hand kind of coast around the peripheral rim of your, your vision, and then go forwards. Some martial artists will say that they don't want to take their, their eyes off their opponent, which is true. Um, but you want to still, again, like we mentioned earlier, let your eyes guide and be windows for your intention. So hands should never really leave your, the rim of your peripheral vision. It's also just for good posture. <clears throat> so no, don't over twist or, or contort the body. So notice I'm facing relatively forward, but I turn the waist. Okay, a couple more times, a few more times. Notice the elbow is relatively down. And the last one, other thing, my hand doesn't just flop dead by my side. I am issuing down through my other hand here. Okay. Again, there's equal, forces going out and down at the same time. All right, very good. So gone. So next we're gonna do an example of small. So this is from Sun Style Tai Chi and it's the same kind of movement and that's it. Okay, now my feet though, I. I'm standing straight forward in a John Jong position. What's different, however, as I'm doing this, my weight is shifted to my right foot. As I come forward, I shift my weight to the left foot. I empty the right foot by lifting my heel slightly. Okay, so again, when I sit back, my weight is on my right foot, left foot, right foot, left foot, push forward. So there's hardly any movement, but there is still movement of the legs. Okay, again, the reason for shifting of my weight and also emptying the foot is so that I get the blood to be circulated from the legs back to the heart. Okay, but this is a minimum amount of movement. So you notice I don't move my legs. All I'm moving is basically the upper body, but my legs are still being engaged. So that's kind of important because the bending of the legs Shifting of the weight is still occurring. So that again, you're using the legs to improve your circulation, okay? But this is basically turning. So a couple of things about the hand. When I come across, I wanna open the fingers, relax. Open my fingers, relax. Open my fingers, relax. And then I slowly turn back. The fingers are open, relax. Now, the fingers come forward and then now I push forward from my wrists forward, okay? Then I relax and I come back again, okay? Come back again, come again, again. Fingers are relaxed at the end. Both hands flex huh? to allow my chi to go forward. And then I extend to draw the chi back and I start again, okay? So Mason will now take it. This is brush knee and press. This is sun style. So this is small movement again, appropriate for someone who has uh, early stages of arthritis or even has arthritis. Again, not too hard to do, easy on the body. Okay, please. Yeah, since it's a longer movement, we'll do is three on where the right hand is pushing forwards, and then we'll do three where it's the left hand that pushes forwards, okay? So you're starting with the right hand that's gonna eventually push, block first with your left hand, okay? So. Block left, right, left, right. And that's how you end up with the, uh, well, one, two, three, four. Yeah, go, okay. So let's get the go. Uh, it's the other way, so <laughs> that's saying corrected. Block with your right hand first, so. One, 
two, three, four. See, and then go. So again, block right hand, block the left. Block for the right, block for the left, go. So notice your hand's already here, so it's easy just to block again. Two, three, four, go. I'm gonna stand back a little further so you can see my feet a little bit better okay. as I do now the other side. So this time, block with your left hand, right. Left, so right comes in. Notice my other foot is going to relax. In a sense, essence, I could lift my leg off the ground if I wanted to. Okay. Helping lift the heel helps illustrate that point for yourself or for your client. So I'll do that again. Two, three, four. So come back. Push. Block with the left hand, block with the right. Block with the left hand. Right hand comes across, left hand comes up behind the left ear. Push. And press. Okay. So yeah, block with the left hand, block with the right. Left, right. So you do like four of those and then brush knee. And press. So we go. Okay, so go. All right. So the next one is for those who are very athletic and they have, like I said, some lower back pains. Maybe they walk in the office office a lot on a computer, but they have some or have pretty good mobility. Okay. Or like some people, I play golf or I play tennis, but I've got a back ache or a shoulder ache. What do you do? So now this is an example for someone who has great mobility. It's also somewhat more complicated. So we'll see if you can follow what I'm doing. It starts similarly though. I'm gonna step forward with my foot again, the left foot forward, the right foot in back. So it's a bow stance, but now, the hand movement and waist movement are much larger, so you kind of watch. So one turn, two turn. Now, I'm gonna drop this hand. As I drop this hand, the other one comes up. So this is an example of yin and yang. This hand's gonna lift up as I push forward. I'm gonna now from here, lift up, turn over, and relax, okay? Let my chi sink down, and now I relax, I start again. One, two, again, this hand drops, the other hand comes up. As this hand pushes forward, this one lifts. Then I lift again and I turn. And again, when I'm here, I relax and sink. So I turn forward, I look like this, okay? Okay, then relax, one. Two, again, drop, lift, bring it up, push forward. So this is pushing forward as I'm lifting. Then turn the palm up, turn it over, make a circle out. Relax, and you're looking that way at the end, okay? So this one's a little more complicated. I'll have Mason go slowly, and uh, we'll do it a few times. And then we'll try the left side. Should we tell this is Chen Sam? Yeah, this is Chen style. This is the biggest way you can do something. So again, this is recommended for someone with large range of motion, who is athletic, but they have pain in the, I said, lower back, shoulders, uh, maybe elbow. These are good exercises for them to try. Should I get the disclaimer about the low stance for Chen style? If that's the case? No, we no, yeah. no, no low stance. Yeah, so here's the thing. Some people who may be familiar with uh, Tai Chi have seen really low stances not necessary for this high uh the high stance uh where we were just a second ago plenty fine you don't need to go low okay so same thing you go in the forward bow stance this is fine block with the right hand 
block to the left. Similar before. Now the left hand comes down. So remember how we closed our hand earlier? Start with the pinky, then the finish with the thumb and point, uh, pointer. There you go. In a sense, you're trying to catch someone's wrist, pressing against it with your palm. Okay. So it goes. Now turn the waist a little bit more. Open and then sink. Okay. And again, walk. Lock, lift, press forwards, turn the palm out. Feel the chest open. I feel my lower back open as well. And then I relax and sink. Good. Again, walk across. Walk across. Lift and press. Turn. Sing. Good. Let's do one more time. Lock. Lock. Lift. Press. Open. Sink. Good. Let's try the other side. Not too, not too much of a brain teaser. All right. <laughs> so. Things that block. Lock. Okay, so you have to only help us get through the motions first. If you just change side, it might confuse you. So for right now, I'll try just block and block, okay? So block as I shift forwards, my right foot is forward, so my left leg's back, locked across. Everybody's got that? If it's, this alone might be a good way for them to also understand the shifting and the blocking. Okay? But now let's incorporate the movements we just did. Okay, so block across. So this hand comes up, uh, my left hand comes by left uh, ear, right hand grips, push and press. So lift and press, open and sink. Good. Again, block, block. Now that you have it, lift and press. Good, open, sink. Okay, so again, I'm looking that way. Lock, lock, lift and press, open, sink. Let's do, and one last time. Lock, lock. And back, so long. Now you got a little taste of Chen style there. Chen? Yeah, Chen uh, style. Yeah, the question I have is um, when the crane come up, I noticed Sifu um, Fong is doing a, there was a twist of the wrist on the other palm. Can you show that again? Uh, yes. I'm a little bit lost on that one. Okay, so here you come up, you press forward. Now, the hand rotates up, rotates around, and then separates. Okay, so again, lift. Here's a press. Here's a lift. Okay, top. Then it can't go anywhere else. It's going to rotate around and then reopen. And then at the end here, you relax. Sinking the elbows and shoulders, allowing the chi to sink back down to the bottom. Okay. So, this is a more complex movement. Again, depends on your patience. Okay. But the key thing to note here is every style has something to offer. And so, don't get stuck to one style or another. For therapeutic purpose, you have to find the right move for the right uh, situation. Partly, how are you going to know? You have to practice yourself, okay? So keep that in mind. You practice yourself, you can feel the difference. You can begin to learn which movements are appropriate. Okay, now earlier, uh, we did wave hand like clouds. I didn't have a chance to show you big wave hand like clouds. Okay, so again, 
the big movements are appropriate for someone who has a bigger range of motion. But you can see this one is very large. I'm going to turn all the way to my right, all the way to my left. Okay. So this is really good for the lower waist and lower back, and also to stretch out the sides of the body. Okay. And again, excellent for activating the Dai Mai, your belt meridian. Okay. So very important. So you notice the hands exchange on the side. It's a circular movement. And then it goes across. So the circle is in this, um, how should I say, in that particular uh, direction. And then the circle is at the end. Okay. So some people tell me, oh, it looks like it's straight. No, it's not straight. Even within the straight movement here, there's a curve here. So the curve occurs here. And then you sweep across. And <laughs> here you curve and sweep across. Okay. So that is wave hand like clouds on a big scale. This is from Chen style Tai Chi. Let, let, have Mason take you through that. Okay. All right. So, right hands up, left hands down. Cross. Almost like you're like holding the ends of a, of a ball here. Then go. Rotate, cross. So this is Chen wave hand like clouds. Chen style Tai Chi wave hand like clouds. And again, you don't need the wide low stance for, for health. Uh, so then turn in your waist, come across. And again, my waist turns, that facilitates the movement of the arms. There you go. Okay. And across. Okay, do four more times. Okay. Two more sets. So. One last set. So rotate, cross, rotate, cross. And one more time, just for those who are trying to figure that out. And once you've done that, so go. All right, very good. So that's Chen style wave hand like clouds. Okay, All right, the next one uh, we're going to take an example of is um, inserting the sleeves. Also, we sometimes call it parting uh, the horse's mane. Now, in Yang style and Chen style, they're pretty much similar. So I'm going to do the Chen style version. I think that's uh, a little bit easier to understand, maybe, maybe not, okay? But uh, it's a little more complex and has a little more rotation. So you gotta imagine, so inserting the sleeves. In the old days uh, in China, people had long robes and they had sleeves. So you can insert your hand inside and draw something out. So imagine you have a sleeve here, you're gonna insert your arm into it. And now I'm gonna pull the arm out. As I do that, I rotate the hand on top and now I separate. As I separate, I watch the front hand. Okay. It comes until it's about lined up with the front of my body. And then I insert the sleeves coming back. Okay, so coming back, turn the hand out, follow it through. And then again, come back. So I'm also shifting my weight. My weight is right now on the Right leg, as I shift out, I shift my weight to the left. And again, if you have a person who has bad knees, you might not want them to shift weight, but actually this particular exercise, shifting the weight won't actually affect the knees because the knees are not doing anything here. So this is generally good for most people. 
So this is inserting the sleeves from Chen style Tai Chi. So let me have Mason take you through that now. Okay. So that was with the left hand going out. So the left hand comes under. Now my right hand, the palm is up. Now it's going to turn the right palm down. And then bring that hand out. As you return back, the right hand turns back up. Left hand comes underneath the arm. And repeat again. Let's do this uh, four times on this side, then we do four times on the other side. One more time. Good. Now we can try the other side. Right hand's gonna be underneath the left arm. Turn the left arm over and go out with the right. Left hand's gonna turn up, right hand's gonna go under the arm and repeat. Again, remember you're shifting your weight from left to right. Try this four more times here. One, two, three, and four. Good. And so going. Okay, very good. Simple. So, like I said, the Yang and Sun version are not that different. So, Yang version, I'm just going to demonstrate it. We're not going to necessarily do it. You're going to close, separate, close, and separate. Okay, so that's Yang style. It's pretty much the same in terms of range of motion as big as uh, the two styles are similar, okay? For Sun style though, the movement is much smaller. So let's consider that. You're gonna raise the hand up so that they're parallel to each other. So parallel and then separate. Okay, then you come back, again, inserting the arm and lift. Again, the arm doesn't lock, okay? So don't lock the arm. Uh, the fingers, however, do open at the end. Okay? And then you relax, bring it back, insert it back in, like you're inserting again the sleeves, and then pull up and separate the hand. Come back. The two hands face each other, and then lift the outside hand and separate. Eyes following the hand. Now relax, everything drops. Okay, I bring the hands to the parallel position. I separate and my eyes follow the hand. Okay, so this is a smaller range of motion uh, of sun style Tai Chi. Again, this is for someone who uh, has issues with the lower back, shoulders, uh, but it's uh, much smaller, not quite as big, so it won't. Uh, impinge as much, but again, help relax the body, soften the body, help to improve circulation. So this is uh, known as um, parting the wild horse's mane. This is one particular version or inserting the sleeves. Okay. All right. Let me have Mason take you through that. Okay. Yeah. Once you're done from a standing position here, you come across with the left hand, right hand's going to come under. Send out. So I'm in, left hand in, right hand on top, over to the other side. Relax the arms. So the left, right hand's going to go underneath for the left arm. Thread the left hand through. There you go. Relax and go. Let's do this uh, four, uh, four more times. So one, 
and two. And three. And four. Good. Relax the hands, relax the body. So long, breathe in, breathe out. All right, very good. So that is a basic method of taking any Tai Chi movement and how should I say, uh, adjusting it to your patient. Okay, so I think that's important. As you make diagnosis, you can get some idea what the patient can do, what the student can do, tailor your training to help them improve their range of motion and their ability to open up their uh, lungs and chest in order to get circulation through the central channels. So those are all uh, important things to do. And as you notice, all the exercises we did try to emphasize that opening, okay? Whether it be wave hand like clouds, brush knee. So here you're opening, right? Here you're closing. So opening and closing is an uh, important aspect. A lot of Tai Chi movements have that characteristic. Now. Of course, if you don't practice Tai Chi, this is an argument for learning some. So I will only tell you that if you wanna learn some Tai Chi, pick a shorter movement or a shorter set. And maybe in the future, uh, we will teach some classes for that so that uh, you can have a form that you can practice. And keep in mind, the form that you practice may not necessarily be something that you teach your patient, okay? Generally, you're gonna take movements from the form to help improve your patient's health. Uh, you don't need to teach them the form, okay? So just keep that in mind. It's not always important to teach a form. You wanna be able to prescribe movements that will improve their health, okay? Uh, and again, uh, we will do more seminars, I'm sure in the future, to kind of explain other types of exercises that can deal with uh, different parts of the body. So there are many different movements in Tai Chi. All the Tai Chi forms, uh, major long forms have over a hundred movements. You can borrow any of those, okay? And I've given you uh, a whole three examples here, plus you practice the Yang style one in the morning. You have more than enough techniques right now to actually begin to, to create a regimen for your own patients or uh, own class and students, okay? So anyway, again, if you have questions, uh, please ask them at the end. So we're gonna take a minute now, a couple of minutes for a break. So get some water, because the next part is gonna be doing ruler qigong. So again, if you haven't got it ready yet, get a newspaper or a magazine, roll it up, put some rubber bands on around, and you can use it for the next part of this seminar, okay? All right, we'll be back in a couple of minutes. Yep. Uh, wooden spoon works too as well. If you have like a big, um, like one of those serving spoons. So otherwise, yeah, you can, if you like what we're gonna cover today, um, one thing I, uh, I like to give people is that you can find uh, French style rolling pins on Amazon. And uh, that's actually what we taught a lot of our students at uh, in Cal Tai Chi at Berkeley, that if they can't afford the really nice, like, carved out uh, Tai Chi rulers. You can get some on Amazon. Uh, of course, find what's appropriate for you. French style rolling pin works just fine. But um, yeah, so grab a little quick drink. We're gonna start here in just a second. If you have questions uh, and, you're, and you're all set, you don't need to step away. You can always type in or raise it. We can uh, answer any questions right now as well. Are you ready? 
Yeah. Okay, so if there's no questions, hopefully people are, are ready to go. Um, we'll go ahead and start by explaining a couple of things and then uh, pick it up. All right, so again, as I said, the Tai Chi ruler or the Tai Chi Bang is from Chen style Tai Chi. The original technique uh, came from Wudong. And of course, uh, Wudong is about 60 miles or so, or 60 kilometers from Chen village. All right, so there's a lot of the monks from uh, Wudong traveling through the village. This is one of the things that they taught. Okay. And again, the ruler is an instrument to help you learn to focus and harness your chi, learn to coordinate your body, your breath, your mind all at the same time. So this is a form of meditation in motion. Okay, so it's standing meditation because you're not moving anywhere, but there is still some movement to help guide your chi. The weight of the ruler helps you to feel what chi feels like. Otherwise, your mind cannot conceive of what it is. So this was given to the young monks, the alkalites, in helping them understand what is chi. How does it feel? Uh, what do I do to teach myself to focus so I can feel it? So this is excellent for uh, new students, also good for patients. Now, the general um, length for the ruler is your own arm. So if you're gonna get one or make one, it should go from your crook of your arm to about the tip of your fingertip. The width is the width of your own fingers, okay? So you don't wanna make it too much wider than this, otherwise you can't grab it. So you want it to be close to that width, okay, if possible. And usually you wanna mark it in the center. So ours is carved in the center. This is the focus point. So if you're teaching it to a patient, you can tell them to put a rubber band in the middle and that when they're practicing it, they should focus here. So this teaches you one, to focus your mind here. And again, the reason for focusing your mind here is to block out other thoughts so that you can reach the meditative state of Ru Jing. So Ru Jing, remember, is a state of quietness. The mind is, no longer thinking about other things is only focus on what it's supposed to be doing. Okay, all right, so that's important. Number two, when practicing the ruler, you think of the logon point that's in the middle of your hand. The logon point always contacts the ruler. So you don't grab the ruler for most of these exercises. You just touch it lightly at the end and think of the ruler as a conduit for your chi to flow through. And so that's why we use uh, like a magazine or wood because it's organic. It allows the chi to transmit. Do not use something that's plastic or uh, metal because those things don't transmit chi or they diffuse your chi. And so they're not that useful. You want something that can conduct it, okay? The thing is, eventually your mind is able to make the connection to the ruler, and then you can take the ruler away and do the exercises. You will begin to feel the chi move that you couldn't move before. And that's through the ruler practice. So that's why this is important. Oftentimes you do the Tai Chi form and I'll ask students, what do you feel? And they go, I don't feel anything. Yeah, and that's because you haven't yet been able to coordinate the mind and body. Yet. So ruler practice, teaching mind, body, breath all to be coordinated at once. So that's why this is such an important exercise. All right, so generally what I'm gonna teach are simple. These are exercises that you can do with anyone, okay? Uh, the first few are gonna incorporate your breath. And so therefore uh, opening up the body, loosening it, but also for what? Circulating your chi, okay? So we're gonna start with beginning Tai Chi, which is a still basic, just like when we're doing a Qigong, you raise your hand and you drop it, because you don't drop your ruler, now, okay? So let's breathe in, okay? And now, breathe out, let the ruler fall. So the arms are almost straight, but you don't lock the elbows.
Okay, now that's the easy way. Now incorporating your leg. So as I breathe in, as the ruler goes up, my knees are gonna bend, I'm gonna go down. As the ruler comes down, I'm gonna come up. Kind of like you're bobbing up and down in a swimming pool. So up, ruler, body down, press down, body comes up. So this is beginning Tai Chi. Again, people often ask me, well, how many times do I do this? At least six times if you're in a hurry, nine times if you're not, and more times if you have time. Okay, so kind of up to you. I'm going to give you a set of four movements that you can do. Uh, but again, you don't have to prescribe all of them or use all of them. Pick the ones that fit whatever it is that uh, you're diagnosing or seeing. Okay. All right. Let me have Mason take you through beginning Tai Chi. We're going to do, for in this case, eight repetitions. Okay. So holding the ruler, the same thing as we're entering your dandong standing position. So keep your spine straight, tailbone tucked in. So make sure the alignment's good. Come up and down. Okay. So the ruler comes up, you bend your knees. The ruler comes back down, you straighten and return back to the standing position you were earlier. Up and down. Again, come up, down. Halfway there, we'll do four more times. I'm gonna do one more just for good measure. And good. Okay. See what? So now open and close is a little bit hard to do with a ruler. But the next one we try and open and close the chest, but kind of a little bit differently. You're gonna hollow the chest around your back and then straighten your body. Okay. So again, this creates a pumping motion. So now, how does this work? As my ruler goes out, I round my back, hollow my chest. When the ruler comes up, back, my body straightens, all right? So again, when you watch it from the side, my body's gonna round, and my body's gonna straighten, okay? This is called tui bump, to push the ruler, okay? So you're pushing it out, Hollow the chest around your back. As it comes in, come up. Now, if you can do that, the next thing, again, depending on your patients, if they can bend their knees, you add the bending the knees in. So as I go out, I bend both knees. As they come in, I straighten back up. Okay, so push out, go in. Okay, push out. Go in. And so this is Tui Bum. So I asked my teacher, what's the purpose? He goes, think of a floss. You're going to floss your Dantian. <laughs> so it goes back and forth through the uh, Dantian, through the Mingman, and you floss your body, cleaning out. So this is a cleansing motion. And also, as I said, trying to incorporate your breathing with your movement. So Mason will now go through Tui Bum. Okay, Tui Bum. So have your hand at the Dantian level. And again, out, around the back, all the chest, and in. Out, and in. Out. And. Halfway there, do four more times. You know, it, you may notice you just breathe normally, but if you want, you can breathe in. As you expand out, breathe out as you come back in.
last time. Good. Circle in. This is the, uh, I'm still going with the ruler. Just come up to the height of your eyes and then down. Just breathe in. Breathe out. Good. Sibu. So the next one is Dai Mai Mo Pan Gong. Dai Mai Mai Mo Pan Gong is to activate again your Dai Mai. Okay. Cause again, because it controls the immune system. So that's really important. And as I said, it nourishes the kidneys. So remember, you daily take money out of the bank, meaning you use your original chi your, uh, that's stored in your kidneys. You have to put it back in somehow. If you don't put it back in, you continue to age until you use up all the chi. So this exercise is important, especially for seniors, to help them replenish the chi. So when your ruler is moving, you're imagining that the chi is traveling around the Dai Mai. Okay. So as I'm going outward, I'm thinking the chi is going around. And as I go back, I think of the chi going through the back, coming back around to the front. Okay, so this is Dai Mai Mo Pan Gong. Okay, so you turn. Now, your eyes are focused on the middle. Okay, use your peripheral vision to watch it. You're making a circle in front of you. Okay, I am also, now that's standing still. Now, the next level is what? I shift my weight first now, it's on my right leg. Now my left leg and I empty the other leg at the same time. So here, shift to the right, shift to the left. So my weight is emptying. Again, now I'm able to what? Incorporate circulation of my legs, okay? So this is Dai Mai Mo Ban Gong. Mason's gonna take you both ways through it. Okay. So, do six times on both sides. And open, come back in. Circle. Now don't go faster than you can breathe. So down. Take your time. Open the hands. Notice my fingers can open here. I can relax as they come in. Open. Nice. Yeah, I'm done with six one way. I'm now going to do six the other way. I'm going to shift from the right side to the left as well. Come back to the center here. Okay. Around, open, back, back, open, back. Let's do one more time. All right, very good. And into our love, so go. So. Ruler 10 circles up and in. It comes up and then in. That's still going with using a ruler. Okay. Safe okay. The next one is Dao Chi. Dao Chi is about feeling your Chi. Okay. Again, uh, it's very hard to teach you if you have no concept or idea what Chi is supposed to feel. How do I know it's there? So this practice is to help you begin to get some feeling for what it feel like. So one thing that's important to note, my ruler is very heavy. This one is made of coco bolo. So you put it in water, it sinks, it doesn't float. Okay, it's that heavy. The reason for that is they'll give you some idea of what chi feels like when you're going through this next motion. You can actually feel some weight to it. And so uh, in the beginning, you're going to feel the ruler. Again, when you take the ruler away and you do the same movement, you will actually feel your chi moving. Okay, so 
this is again another way to teach you to connect to your chi and to learn what it's all about. Okay, so you start with it on your side. And so the movement is simple you lift and you pour. So imagine this is filled with water and I'm pouring. Okay. If you're using a magazine or a newspaper, see if you can feel the weight of the newspaper. You want to feel that because that's what the chi would feel like if you're actually able to move your chi. So now this is the, again, simple way. You just turn back and forth. Now, I can also shift my weight now. I'm going to lift as I pour. I put all my weight on the left side. I empty my right foot. Now I shift my weight to the right. I lift. I empty my left foot. And you'll note, you can now suddenly feel the weight of the ruler empty as your heel goes down. Oh, it comes up, sorry. So this is Dao Qi, pouring your Qi. Again, this is to help you feel your chi. Because again, in the beginning, there is no way to actually teach you what it feels like. This ruler is a tool to help you understand what chi actually feels like when you're able to move it. All right, so let's follow Mason again. Your ruler in their same position here. I'm gonna begin on the ruler on my right side, my left foot over here. Gonna be empty, so I can lift my heel off the ground a little. Now you, you really don't have the mobility for that. You don't necessarily have to do that, but this is a good way to really think about shifting over one claw and another. Okay. So again, shift. And shift. Do four more times on each side. Last set. Good. Now I'm going to bring the ruler up, in towards you, and then down. Ruler comes up, breathe in, down. Again, so going using the ruler. Come in and down. Good. Okay, see boom. Again, the next one, again, to help you contact with your chi. So you're going to hold it again at the end, but now you're going to rotate. So imagine this is a ball. You're holding on to the edges of the ball and rotating, which is why this is also called ro chiu gong. So slowly turn it like it's a ball. Okay. So right now I'm just using my arms. Okay. Now. I bend my knee slightly. I'm now going to utilize the rest of my body. And now I shift my weight to the right, shift it to the left. So now I've incorporated my legs. It's shifting from side to side. And I can also reverse it and do the same thing. Again, shifting my weight from right to left to right, to left. So this is Ro Chiu Gong. Let me have Mason take you through that, forwards and backwards. Okay, so let's go forwards first. So, yeah, very cool. Rotate. So really use your intention. Think about the center of the ruler. What I'm doing is as the ruler comes down, I'm on the right side with my weight. As the ruler comes down the left side, my weight's on the left side. So that helps you think about it. You can do it that way. 
do four more times this way on both sides. One, two, three, four. Good. Now let's try the opposite direction. Bring the ruler in so you can see me from the sides. This way. In. Out. In. Out. Just keep the hips forwards. Shift from one quad to the other. Try to keep the uh, ruler center relatively in the same place. So you circle. Good. And relax. So going. Zero. Question. Yes. Um, the shifting of the weight. Uh, without a ruler, um, I believe the general rule Tai Chi is if my right hand is out, then my weight is on the left feet. So it's opposite. Uh, with the ruler, uh, is that still hold true? I noticed in the last two movements, is the hand that is up is the one with the empty weight. The hand that is down is the where the, the weight is. So I, I just want to reconfirm with Sifu. Yeah, that's correct. So this is up, my weight is on this side. This is up, my weight is on the other side. So it's rotating this way. So I'm shifting right to left, left to right. Okay. And again, the your perspective is what makes it yin or yang okay it's not any hard and fast rules people should kind of remember that um so yeah as long as you are shifting the weight as well as moving the ruler uh should be okay okay make sense okay thank you that that really helps a lot thank you so that's the best way okay next uh, is a uh, long bang. Long bang is uh, to feel the chi moving inside your body. Okay, so this is kind of an interesting exercise. Think of holding a cradle, or you know, you're going to rock the baby or something. You rock it back and forth. Now, again, this is to see if you can discover your chi. You want to feel the inside moving. All right, because chi moves inside your body. How are we going to experience it? Well, this exercise will help you try and experience chi movement inside the body. And again, this is good for the digestion. So I'll take Mason take you through. This is long bang to rock back and forth. Mm -hmm. So rock to the right, to the left. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight. All right, very good. So, okay, Sibyl. Yeah, I just thought of one other thing too. If you're pushing down and all your weight is on the same side as the ruler going down, you're actually double weighted. So in this case, we're not. The weight is on one side and the other side is empty. If I do it on the other hand, um, in the opposite way, I become double weighted. So we try not to do that. Okay, so that's long bung. The next one is um, tree sticking out of the forest. So this is kind of interesting. The beginning, you just lift up and now come forward. Bring it back and sink. So you're thinking about the chi moving along the sanjiao, your central meridian. So breathe. So go out, 
come back. Okay, so that's without activating the legs. Now we're gonna activate the legs. As I come up, I'm gonna bend my knees. The ruler comes forward. The ruler comes back as it sinks. I come back up. So this is tree sticking out of the forest. Okay, again, this is the work on your central circulation but also the legs too, to get the circulation in the legs. Okay, so let me have Mason take you through that. Okay. And it doesn't matter which hand's on top versus the other one. Yeah. Yeah, so just hold the ruler what comes naturally to you. We'll do six of these. Out. And go forwards. And so stand out with the ruler. Rain back in. Do two more times. Out. Back in. Again, helping circulate chi along the center line. Ground yourself there. And so go. Okay, so I'm going to go back now to one of the movements we did earlier, which is pouring, but now I'm going to do it small. So you kind of rest the ruler in your palms. Imagine this is filled with liquid. I'm going to pour it into one side, pour it into the other side. So this side has my weight, I empty it to the other side. This is also dou qi or shao dou, a small pouring. Okay. And again, this is to help simulate the flow of your qi so you can feel it. All right, so I have Mason do that with you. All right, so come up on time soon. So we're gonna be doing just uh, six of these. So one. Two, three, four, five, and six. Good. Okay, All right, so I hope you found that interesting. Now, some of you have taken seminars before from me, but you'll realize that I spent a lot more time in trying to explain details this time because I realized that unless I can explain what I feel to you, you're not gonna have the same experience. Okay, so that's important. And I've tried to develop a method to go from what? practicing outside the practicing inside because we call Tai Chi Nei Gong. Nei Gong meaning what? Nei, inside is moving, not outside is moving. And so normally the way we've been teaching Qi Gong, it, come, it how should you say, concentrates so much on the outside, you never actually learn how to use the inside. So we're trying to use the tools and the, how should I say, the range of motion of the movements to help you begin to develop internal practice. Okay, so that Tai Chi actually has some effect. So if you notice the big movements, like big wave hand like clouds from Chen Stao, that's to develop your outward coordination. Okay, so that's good on one respect. The other hand, the Sun Stao is small, very small outside movement, is beginning to teach you to move from inside, meaning that my Dantian moves and my hands follow. In the beginning, my arms are leading my body. In the end, the body must lead the arms, okay? So uh, this is kind of a method that I've developed to help you kind of 
understand that and begin to add that to your practice. Otherwise, Tai Chi is only a physical exercise and you don't actually develop any internal. So uh, that's why that's important. So now next thing to test, hold your hands up like this. Okay, you're gonna turn around your index fingers as far fast as you can go. about 50 times. Now bring the hands together, but don't touch. Now move them back and forth. Okay. All right, so I'll leave it up to you what you feel, but I'll just describe it. For some people, you can feel tingling in your hands. Some people, it feels kind of like you're pushing your hands through molasses. Uh, you may feel some magnetic repulsion. Any of those things are sign that you actually activated your chi. Okay, so now also take your hands, now roll it like this. See if you can feel the chi in the middle of your hand and your fingertips. You'll feel maybe, again, some tingling, some uh, thing that feels like electricity moving to your fingertips. That's good. Again, that's the beginning of developing chi. And this is what you want the students to develop. So eventually they can heal themselves, okay? So that's the basic premise of Tai Chi, that through movement, through motion, which is natural in the universe, we can heal the body, okay? Actually body and mind, okay? Reverse the direction, again, see if you can feel it. Now, take your hands now, finally stretch it out. Can you still feel it? Now, I need to say, if you don't feel anything, do not be disappointed. You don't always, okay? You have to develop both sensitivity and you need practice, okay? That's why in the old days, this stuff is called Gong Fu. Gong is a skill developed through practice. Fu is a person who does the practice. So that's actually the meaning of Gong Fu. A person who develops a skill through lots of practice. It is not a term for martial arts, even though if you put Gong Fu into martial arts, yeah, you can be good at that. So, but this is also true for this. You have to practice in order for it to feel. And then for students or patients, you do not want to give them a whole lot of techniques, okay? You want them to practice a few, a lot, and that way they can get results. Uh, again, as Mason always says, it's not about quantity, it's about quality. And quality plus the details that go with it. So I've tried to give you lots of details. Things to think about in the future. Can I feel my Dantian moving? Most people say, well, I don't know where it is. Okay, so in the beginning, see if you can feel your core. Is your core moving? Okay, that's pretty big. You can feel your core now. Try and find the middle of the core. Okay, you find the middle of your core, okay, it's somewhere around here, then put your finger here, move the core to move your body. Okay, or you can just put it in your belly button and move. And then next what? I move my arm, the belly button moves, and it moves back. It moves out, and moves back. So that you learn to connect your inside and outside. So event in the beginning, the core is this size, right? What you want to do is make the movement smaller and smaller so that eventually my core moves and my hand moves, okay? And you feel it rotate and you feel your hand rotate. So I'm no longer standing here using my arm to rotate. Inside is turning, outside is following. So that is real Neigong. And so the way to reach that is through the practice that we've given you. And I realize in one seminar, it's uh, not that easy to learn, but uh, we've given you the tools. You can try it on your own. Uh, and then, like I said, if you're doing it with patience, one, two movements at the most and have them try that first, see how they feel. 
So I've given you the important ones, ones for your lower back, one for your shoulder and neck, because that's really common. Uh, we've incorporated the legs so that you can help the legs also recover from arthritis. And again, remember, it's gentle, small movements, not big movements, okay? I'm not rocking back and forth movements. So even when I was moving back and forth, 60% of my weight in front when I sit back, 60% is in the back and I come forward again. So it's a very small movement back and forth, not very large. So if you did 24 Yang style, for instance, you shift forward 70%, sit back 90%. That's bad, okay? Because that will ruin your knees. So uh, the, what we've shown is basically what you should uh, be practicing and using for patients. All right, so again, if there are any questions, I'll be happy to answer it. Otherwise, thank you very much. And uh, we will see you next time. Uh, you know, don't be strangers. If you need help, uh, please contact Mason. Mason has access to a lot of our video library. And if you want to access it, we can give you access to some of those uh, classes if you like. Okay, thank you. Yep. Thanks, everybody. No, that went a little bit over, but if you have any questions, you can send it to us. Otherwise, uh, Mason, yeah. uh, can you put your link on the chat and the seafood's link on the chat, please? I'll send our, our email because I think I don't want to take up more time from uh, from uh, our next session. But so you can uh, reach out to us at tai chi at ucmap.org if you have questions. So, yeah. Thank you, Mason. Thank you, Sifu. Thank All you. Right. Yeah. Yeah, thank, thank you, you, Mason. Thank you, Sifu. Okay, we'll see you next time. Thank Thanks you. so much and happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Uh, I think that for Dr. Wang, uh, we'll be passing it off to you in the, in the, the next session. I think, uh, yeah. So for those who need to stay on for the call for the next seminar, we will see, uh, we'll hand off the baton. So thanks everybody.